Welcome. This lesson is over how to divide decimals. So how do you know? We have 54 times 3 and 13 hundredth is equal to 169 and 210 thousandths place. Or 54 times 3 and 13 hundredth is equal to 169 and 2 hundredths. What can you tell me about this? Well, from what I can tell here, um, it seems like they're equivalent. 54 whole is the same as saying 54 and 0, 0 hundredths. And if I annex zeros right here, the products are the same. The reason why I did it this way is we have students who prefer lining up the decimal point as such and then multiplying accordingly. So they get the numbers 1690200. Zero, zero. If you are going to do, if you are going to line up the decimal point, you need to count the places behind a decimal point. There will be four places behind a decimal point. Hence, the decimal here will go between the 169 and the 0, 0200 ten thousandths. Again, estimating is so important because 50 times 3 is 150. Well, really, 54 times 3. If you multiply 54 times 3, you get 162. And is this, as, is this actual answer close to the estimated answer of 162? It is. I prefer not to line up the decimal point because I do not want to affix the extra zeros. I prefer multiplying just as whole numbers. It's like this. 4 times 3 is 12, carry to 1. 4 times 1 is 4, plus 1 is 5. 4 times 3 is 12. I am done with that um, ones place, so let me put a placeholder here. 5 times 3 is 15, carry to 1. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 1 is 6. 5 times 3 is 15. If you add all of this up, 2 plus 0 is 2. 5 plus 5 is 10, carry to 1. 6, 2, and 1 is 9, 5, 1 is 6, we have 1, 6, 9, 0, 2, but let's look at, let me get my highlighter, how many places are behind a decimal point? Two places, hence in my product, there should be two places behind a decimal point. This is in the hundreds place, while this is in the hundreds place. So it goes right here, is this answer, is this product, close to my estimated answer of 162? It is. So today we're going to be learning how to divide decimals. I have 65 cents. How many nickels are in 65 cents? So I would like you to highlight 65 cents. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 65 cents. How many nickels are in 65 cents? Well, this is a nickel. Five pennies. This will be a nickel. 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 And nickel. So how many nickels are in 65 cents? One set of nickels, two sets, three sets, four sets, five sets, six sets, seven sets, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There are 13 sets. So there are 13 sets of nickels, or 13 nickels and 65 cents. Can I write this in algorithm form? 65 cents. I'm dividing it into groups of five hundreds. Now, can I write this in fractional form? Yes, I can. 65 cents divided by five cents. So we are going to be learning how to divide this. We do not like working with decimals right here. Is there a way I can turn this five hundredths 
into a whole number. Because I prefer working with whole numbers. The divisor, that is. Times. Times. What power of 10 should I multiply 500 by so it will be 5 whole? I would multiply by 100. What place value is this in? This is in the hundreds place. So if you multiply 100 times 500, that's 500. You move the decimal, there's two places behind the decimal points, or two places here. So that equals 5 whole. So I need to multiply the numerator also by, the, by 100. So 500 times 100 is 5 whole. And 6,500 times 100 is 65. And what is 65 divided by 5? It is 13. So that is another way, instead of using base 10 models, in order to get 13. We try to figure out how many 500s go into 6,500, 13 groups. Or how many 5s go into 65, 13 groups. Because you multiply 6,500s and 500 by the power of 10 by 100, which made them into whole numbers. Because whole numbers is so much easier. Because we've all divided by whole numbers since we're in elementary school. Let's look at another example. We have 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths. So let me shade in 9 tenths. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 tenths. How many, I need to divide this into groups of three tenths. One group, two groups, three groups. So the answer is three. How can I write this in fractional form? What if I do not want to use base 10 model? What if I rather use algorithm in order, arithmetic in order to solve this? So I would write nine tenths divided by three tenths in as a fraction. I would like to turn this denominator into a whole number. What power of 10 should I multiply by? So 3 tenths becomes a 3. What place value is in the tens place? Because 3 times 10 is 30. 30. And if you move just one place behind a decimal point, so it would be 3.0 or just 3. So 9 tenths times 10 would be 9. And what is 9 divided by 3? Three? 3 whole. So there are 3 groups of 3 tenths in 9 tenths. Or 9 tenths divided by 3 tenths is 3. Or 9 divided by 3 is 3. Let's try another example. Please shade in 28 hundredths. 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. I would like to divide this into groups of four hundredths. One group of four hundredths. Two groups of four hundredths. Three groups of four hundredths. Wait, one, two, three, four. Five groups of four hundredths. Six, one, two, three, four. Groups of four hundredths. Seven groups of four hundred and eight groups of four hundreds. There are eight groups. If I have twenty eight hundreds and I divide it into groups of four hundreds, there will be eight groups. Can I write this in fractional form? Yes, I can. Would you like to turn this denominator, this divisor, into a whole number? I would. So what power of 10 should I multiply this by? Would I multiply it by the tens place or the hundreds place? By the hundreds. So hence, this becomes 4. And this becomes 28. 28 divided by 4, 7. Wait, did I mess up here? Oh, how embarrassing, how embarrassing, how embarrassing. You know what? Luckily, I checked my work. There are one group of 400s, two groups of 400s, three groups, four groups, five groups, six groups, seven groups of 400s that go into 2800s. 
So I checked my work here. It's always good to use multiple representation to check your work. So, so I have 2800s, I divided by 400s, seven groups of 400s going to 2800s, or four groups, you have four that goes in 28, seven groups, seven times. However, let's make it a little more harder. This is where it gets a little more confusing. We have six tenths. Let me shade in six tenths. This is six tenths. I need to divide this in groups of 15 hundredths. So this would be one, two, three, four, one group of 15 hundredths, two groups of 15 hundredths, three groups of 15 hundredths, and this is the fourth group of 15 hundredths. So how many groups of 15 hundredths go into six tenths? Four groups. Can I write this as fractional form? Yes, I can. What power of 10 should I multiply 1,500 or 6 tenths by? This is in the hundreds place. I'm going to multiply this by the hundreds. So this would be 15 hundreds times 100 would be 15. But what would 6 tenths times 100 be? This is a little different from the other one. In the other one, if you look in the other examples, these are on, both of these are in the hundreds place. Both of these are in the tenths place. Both of these are in the hundreds place. But in this example, this is in the tenths while this is in the hundreds. Could I, I mean, there's two ways you could do it. You can affix a zero right here. And so this is now in the hundreds place. So you have 60 divided by 15 is 4. Another way you could do it is you can move this decimal tenths, hundreds. So some people prefer doing this way. I move this decimal times 100 tenths, hundreds, tenths, hundreds. So that's why it's 60 divided by 15. Let's look at a last example. We have 75 hundreds, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 75 hundreds. I would like to divide this into 5 tenths. How many groups of 5 tenths go into this? One group of 5 tenths. Hmm, I don't have enough, enough to make a second group. So it goes in one group. I only have 25 piece, 25 hundreds left. 25 out of 50. Isn't that the same as saying one and a half? So how many five tenths go into 75 hundred? One and a half. Could I do this with algorithm? Yes, I can. So 75 hundreds divided by five tenths. What power of 10 should I multiply by? Well, this is in the tenths place. So this will be 5. If I multiply 75 hundredths by 10, that would be 750, two places behind a decimal point. So it would be 7 and 5 tenths. Another way I could think about it is I move this one place over to the tenths place and I move this one more place to the tenths place. So what is 7 and 5 tenths divided by 5? Well, let's find out. Can 5 go in 7 one time? We have two remainder. Line the decimal point, bring down the 5. How many 5s go in 25? Five groups. That is why you have 1 and 5 tenths. So remember to turn a fraction to a decimal. You have a dividend divided by divisor equal quotient. So if you have a number such as this, 12 divided by 2, you can write it in fraction form. 12 divided by 2, and that would be 6 as the quotient. So. That is going to help us answer these word problems. Maria has a dollar eighty. 
and wants to buy gum that costs three cents each. How many pieces of gum can she buy? So she starts off with a dollar eighty. That's how much she has in her pocket. She wants to divide this money into smaller groups of three hundreds because she wants to know how many three hundreds or packet or pieces of gum that can go into a dollar eighty. She wants to partition that dollar eighty into smaller groups to see how many pieces of gum she can buy. Can I write this in fractional form? Do you like working with decimal? I do not. What power 10 can I multiply this? Well, this is in the hundreds place, so I'm going to multiply this by a hundreds place. So that would be 3. Move this to the hundreds place twice. That will be 180. And what is 180? Divide by 3. Well, 3 goes into 1, none. 3 goes into 18 six times. Remainder 0, bring down to 0. 3 goes 0, 0 times. So 60 pieces of gum. To check your work, if you multiply 60 times 300, 60 times 3 is 180. There are two places behind the decimal point. So there should be two places behind the decimal point. That is the original value, the original dollar amount that Miss Maria had to start out with. So 60 pieces of gum. Let's try another example. Susie has two and seven tenth meters of ribbon. She is going to make some bows, and each bow takes nine tenth meters of ribbon. How many bows can she make? So she's going to, she starts with all this ribbon. So imagine she has all this ribbon right here. She's going to divide this or cut it up into smaller parts. She wants to know how many smaller parts, how many groups of nine tenths go into two and seven tenths. Can I write this in fractional form? Yes, I can. What power of 10 should I multiply this so it become whole number, this divisor? Well, this is in a tens place. So I'm going to multiply it by tens. So that would move it, it'll be nine. That would times 10 would be 27. And what is 27 divided by 9? 3. 3 bows. Let's check our work. 3 times 9 tenths is 27. One place behind the decimal point. 2 and 7 tenths. And that's the answer. Number 3. I purchase a piece of cheddar that is 3 and 2 tenths meters long. So here's my cheddar cheese. He intends to cut the cheddar into smaller parts, into 8 tenth meters length. How many pieces will I have after I cut the cheese? <laughs> so I cut the cheese. Hopefully, um, it doesn't, uh, the class doesn't leave after I've done that. Um, so uh, can I write this in fractional form? So. Here is fractional form. What power of 10 should I multiply by in order for the 8 tenth to be a whole number? By 10. So that becomes 8 times 10. That becomes 32. 32 divided by 8 is 4. So 4 pieces of cheese. So check my work. 4 times 8 tenths. That's 32. One place value behind decimal point, And that's the original uh piece of cheddar that I started with. And the last question, Mr. Rao plans to have a party. He mixes 8 and 2 tenths liter of fruit punch, 4 and 5 tenths liters of Sprite, and 3 and 1 tenth liter of pineapple juice. If each serving is 400 liters, find the number of servings. So he, <coughs> he mixes 8 and 2 tenths liters of fruit punch, 4 and 5 tenth liters of Sprite, 3 and 1 tenth liter of pineapple juice. By mixing all this up, he now has 15 and 8 tenth liter of punch. So each person, each serving is 4 hundredth of a liter. So I need to divide this big bowl of fruit punch into 4 hundredths liters. How many servings can I get out of this? So let's rewrite this in fractional 
form. What power of 10 should I multiply this by? I'm going to multiply this by the hundreds. By multiplying this by a hundreds, that would be 4. Multiply this by 100, that would be 1,580. So what is 1,580 divided by 4? 4 can go in 15 three times. Subtract that as 3, bring down to 8. 4 going to 38 nine times. Bring down to 0, 4 going to 25 times. So he can make 30, 395 servings of 400 liters. Let's check my work. If I multiply 395 times 4 hundreds, I would get 1,580. But then there's two places behind a decimal point, so it goes right here. And that's the original amount of fruit punch that I started with. So this is how you divide decimal. You write it as a fractional form to decide what I need to multiply by what power of 10 in order to make the divisor or denominator a whole number, and then you divide.